Hey everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Sean. And we watched a movie. A whole lot. Yes. So if you've been paying attention, we are now on episode three of the crazy 90s Batman movies. Uh, in fact, we have now graduated from Tim Burton to Joel Schumacher. I'm not sure that's a graduation. Well, <laughs> I guess. I mean, it's linear. It's yeah. <laughs> we're not moving up. We're just continuing down the chronological line uh, to Batman Forever, which came out in '95. So they hoped that this one would come out earlier than that. Uh, they really liked to roll these along, but they were trying to get Tim Burton back, and Tim Burton had to be talked into even doing the second one. We uh, mentioned that earlier. He's not into doing sequels, um, and this time. Um, it was really, uh, Warner Brothers were really feeling iffy about uh, Tim Burton because uh, that last one, <laughs> Batman Returns, was criticized for being too dark. Now, living in this century, the 21st century, we're all used to Batman movies being pretty dark. And when we watch those movies, we think they're kind they're of silly. They're a joke. Silly. They're hokey. Uh, but no, they thought they were way too dark. They were not family friendly. You couldn't bring your little kids to it. And more importantly, McDonald's didn't want to do any more cross promotions oh. with them because it wasn't a McDonald's kind of movie. So they uh, told Tim Burton, look, we need you to tone this way down. And Tim Burton said, well, goodbye. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> good for him. Mm -hmm. uh, his movies were at least interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Batman Forever is not. <laughs> and it's definitely not dark. Mm -hmm. It's neon everything. So I think Joel <laughs> Schumacher got the memo and took it so literally. Yes. Well, that's the thing. Michael Keaton, again, they had not signed anyone to these lavish contracts. Um, he, when he heard Tim Burton was leaving, he was a little bit iffy about that. He did go in and meet with Joel Schumacher, and then he was like, no thanks. Yeah. Um, he found it cartoony, and he had no interest in turning the character cartoony, um, and just futuristic almost. Mm -hmm. Like, it was a really yeah. weird m mix. <laughs> Uh, and weird tone to the movie that neither Keaton nor Burton really wanted to stick with. Yeah, and that was definitely the right move by both. <laughs> yes. Because this movie, Dark, might have been something. Mm -mm. When you well, talk about Jim Carrey as the Riddler, the Riddler is a sadistic mm -hmm. psychopath. Mm -hmm. He's not a something for kids. No, but... Uh, when Tim Burton was in pre-production for it, do you know he, who he wanted for the Riddler? No. It wasn't Jim Carrey. Who was it? It was Mickey Dolenz. Do you know that name? Yeah, from the Monkees? Correct. That's bizarre. Correct, Sean. <laughs> from the Monkees. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we know uh, that Warner Brothers wanted Robin Williams, but Robin Williams was still burned from the last time that they dangled it in front of him. Yeah, Robin Williams would have been good. Uh, Michael sure. Jackson wanted the role. Yeah, no thank uh, you. Matthew Broderick expressed interest. I could see that. You could? Okay. Yeah, I could see that. I mm -hmm. think he would do a decent job, but okay. it's not, I think Robin Williams and Jim Carrey are, are both better suited for the <laughs> crazy side of the Riddler. And Mickey Dolenz? No, he doesn't even factor in. <laughs> I don't understand that at all. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't, like, obviously the Monkeys show was way before our time, and it yeah. hasn't aged well, no. or um, had a lot of respect moving no. forward, so it is hard for us to appreciate it, but who knows? Someone was a fan. Tim Burton. Tim Burton was the fan. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and he had a vision. So anyways, Burton's out, Keaton's out. As we said in the very beginning, only Michael Goh, who plays Alfred, and Pat Hingle as Commissioner Gordon, those are the only two who lasted the entire season, uh, series, excuse me. So they are back again, but it's an all new cast. And even though the movies are always meant to be standalone movies, like they don't really refer to each other, they are meant to be the same characters. Or else, why would you keep yeah. <laughs> Michael go around? They're meant to, it's supposed to be the same Batman, but it's just always in episodic 
beginning and end standalone movies. Like an old comic book. Sure. Um, so Leonardo DiCaprio also came in to test and talk for Robin. But he agreed with Michael Keaton that this was just going way too silly in the hands of Michael yeah. Abba, Joel Schumacher, and he really did not feel like this was the role for him. Also a good choice. Uh -huh. So um, Chris O'Donnell was not so discerning. No, he was not. Um, I was kind of disappointed because in this movie we finally have our Two-Face. Um, who was supposed to have been Billy D. Williams. He was in the very first Batman movie and he expected to play Two-Face and would have played Two-Face for Tim Burton. Uh, but Joel Schumacher didn't want him and they had to pay. That's the thing, it's in the contracts, it's pay or play. So if he doesn't get to, pl to play the character, he still gets paid. You have to pay him the same amount to leave as to act. I don't understand why Joel Schumacher wouldn't have wanted Billy D. Williams. Well, you know what? Uh, they had to do the same thing for Marlon Wayans, who, as you know, was attached to play Robin. He didn't want him either. And again, WB had to pay for two people, for Marlon Wayans and Chris O'Donnell. Now, what is it about both Marlon Wayans and Billy D. Williams and is not the same for Tommy Lee Jones and Chris O'Donnell. Can anyone think what the difference is? Yeah, I is? can think of one difference. Yeah, so that's uncomfortable. Yeah. So if you think about the entire cartoony universe that Joel Schumacher has made for us, there's not a little, lot of color there, is there? No. No, no, no there's single none, principle. Right? No, yeah. there's not. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a missed opportunity, obviously. We, um, uh, problematic uh, choices. Mm -hmm. Especially when you had Billy D. Williams already in mm -hmm. the series. Why wouldn't you bring him back? Mm -hmm. Well, um, Joel Schumacher had just made The Client with Tommy Lee Jones. And he just thought, this guy is going to be perfect for this role. Which nobody else in the universe would have thought. No, he's not. And I feel like it's not true. It's <laughs> not true. Movie, eh. Like, I don't, I'm not against Tommy Lee Jones generally, I but like did Tommy he belong Lee Jones. in this movie? He's not a good Two-Face. No, but like, nobody is a good anything in this yeah, movie. So it's true. not like he stands out as particularly bad. It's just everything is operating on like, are these the stand-ins? Like, yeah. this can't be the for real movie, right? Uh -huh. Like, there's a better version out there that, <laughs> I don't yeah. know. It's really disturbing. <laughs> the Tim Burton cut. Yes. Bring it back. Please. So um, Jim Carrey was to have supposed to have shaved a big question mark into his head, but never did because he was going through a divorce and wanted to look respectable in divorce court. Yeah, Guess sense. what? You're already Jim Carrey. I don't think the weird hair no, was going too to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the thing with Tommy Lee Jones coming onto the set because Joel Schumacher really liked him from the client. Um, he was not very nice on this set. Mm. Um, the first thing he ever said to Jim Carrey, he gave him a big hug and said, I don't like you, I don't like your movies, and I cannot condone your buffoonery. Wow. Uh, strong words. Very strong. <laughs> not gonna sanction that before. For, for the Riddler. Yeah. He's not gonna condone any <laughs> buffoonery from the Riddler. As do face like, yeah. um, you know pot calling the kettle black here no he so he t tells the guy to his face on day one i don't like you so it's super tense set between the two of them yeah. it was so bad that joel schumacher said i am not going to work with any of these people ever again uh he did end up work working with jim carrey again but nobody else even though he came into this really liking yeah. Tommy Lee Jones and Val, Val Kilmer, who is the new Batman guy, spoiler alert, Val Kilmer squeaked in there. So Joel Schumacher says uh, Val Kilmer did two really big kind things to him in his life. He said yes to Batman and then he acted so shitty it was easy to get rid of him as Batman for the next movie. So it was terrible on set. Everybody hated everybody else on set, except Jim Carrey and um, Val Kilmer uh, grew to be great friends and they bonded over their dead dads, hmm. which sounds like something their characters would do. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, I don't know who sits around at work mm -hmm. just being like, who's got a dead dad? Show of hands. 
Apparently they do. Right after Tommy Lee Jones puts all the cards on the table and tells every, every looks everybody in the eye and says, I don't like you. I don't like you. I don't like you. <laughs> okay, guys. It's going to be an intense few months. Apparently. Mm -hmm. It certainly didn't translate to anything good on screen. <laughs> all that conflict. No. no. And Joel Schumacher said Val Kilmer was childish and impossible, although Val Kilmer was going through his own divorce at the time. Everybody was miserable. Everybody had a dead dad. There was just no... The only hugs that happened were I hate you hugs, yeah. which are weird. Like, that's a weird kind weird. of hug to be given out. Like, yeah. you could skip the hug next time. It's a mafia hug. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, <clears throat> so, Robin... We finally get to see a Robin. We do. They made us wait for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, he show, like he, he shows up as part of like a circus act with his family, and he's the only one who survives a gruesome in incident. Um, he is wearing the wrong costume in the movie. He is not wearing the Dick Grayson costume. He is wearing the Tim Drake costume. Interesting. Um, that costume did not hit comic books until 1990. And at the time, there was a rumor that Tim Burton had had a, a hand designing that, since obviously he was preparing to make this movie with Marilyn Wayans wearing the suit. And now, and now Chris O'Donnell gets to wear it, and it's not even a Dick Grayson suit. Controversy, guys. A little bit. Oh, boy. Yeah. There's a number of good Robins, though. Okay. Tim Drake is a good Robin. But he was called Dick Grayson. He it's wasn't true. Tim he Drake. He wasn't Tim Drake. Like, call him Tim Drake. If he's going to wear the Tim Drake, why does he have... Perhaps well, because he's... obviously... Oh, don't, don't even obviously me. <laughs> okay. Batmobile. You want to talk Batmobile? Let's talk Batmobile. Let's talk Batmobile, Sean. Is it still very penis-y? Yes. yes. Some would argue penis -er than ever. <laughs> um... Usually that thing is usually driven by stunt people. <laughs> they only want stunt drivers behind that thing because they're very expensive to make pretend cars. Yeah. Um, but Chris O'Donnell insisted that he should get to drive it. And what did he do? Did he crash it? He sure did. He crashed that thing and they had to replace the fender on it. Thanks, Chris O'Donnell. Yep. Oh. It's costing so much money. <laughs> yes. And this car, you may remember, had a bunch of LEDs like yeah. under it, like it's a street racer. Yeah. Pretty flashy. It is. Did you like that, Sean? No. Oh, you didn't? No, that's not Batman. <laughs> Batman doesn't have neon <laughs> on his car. I mean, generally he tries to stay under the radar. Yeah. It's weird that he also wanted to pimp his ride. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. We still have not established who is making these gadgets. No, we haven't. Um, but there were a lot of new bat uh, vehicles yep. in this movie and more to come. Um, Jim Carrey, <laughs> he, the Riddler does not have to have the same physicality as the heroes maybe. Uh, although we've not seen Batman doing a lot of like intense fight choreography. No, we haven't. Like we didn't really do that stuff back then. Like nope. it was, <laughs> No, you just punched me and he did yes. a kick. Yeah. And then everyone would fall down. <laughs> People were just not as tough. There's no then, action. I guess. Yeah. They all had like brittle bones. They weren't yeah. eating enough calcium. <laughs> Maybe that's the trick. Um, so Jim Carrey's really uh, repertoire for this movie was learning to twirl the cane. <laughs> How many canes did he destroy? At least a dozen. Okay. Uh, and a lot of furniture in his trailer. Oh. Why was he doing this in his trailer? Yes, why was That's he doing it? I mean, this trailers in his are like long, They're narrow tiny. spaces. Like, yeah. get outside, yeah. dude. <laughs> um, Will Shorts. I don't know if that name uh, rings any bells for you, no, but it he is the puzzle master on NPR and the editor of the New York Times crossword. Oh, okay, so he's a big deal in the puzzle. He's world. a big deal. So he was brought on board to write the Riddler's riddles. Okay. Which um, are not that good. They're not. <laughs> not that good. I'm like, uh, no, that's a credit he really wants because, of yeah. course, they were trying to make this for kids, so yeah. they're not really complicated things. They're, they're pretty not. dumb, actually. Yeah. <laughs> they're kind of disappointing. Yep. Um, so we have talked 
every uh, like for Batman, Batman Returns, now it's Batman Forever. The bat suit has been a plague to whoever is wearing it. Yes. It's got limited mobility, which is super ironic. Like, we we're just talking, this is why you could only do like one punch, is because he can barely move yeah. that. He couldn't even turn his head. The suit is actually a liability. Yeah. It weighs 55 pounds. Yeah, no superhero, no serious superhero would ever <laughs> no. wear it. No. You know, that's why most of them do spandex, I yeah. guess. But, um, so they, the costume department, the wonderful overworked costume department, actually made a hundred different Batman and Robin costumes for every, like, for, this one can be worn in the water, and this one is good for fighting, and this one is good for when we light them on fire. Like, they had so many different huh. suits okay. that, like, because they, <laughs> they would only make it good for one thing. Yep, gotcha. That's a lot. That is a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Of, and still we think that the fighting is was bad. pretty lame. Yeah. So, <laughs> come on. And yet also still heavy enough. And I think not as heavy as the past suits, but still heavy enough that Val Kilmer in that first opening fight scene lost five pounds just, just from wearing it. the suit. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> yes. Um, so... Dr. Chase Meridian. Oh yeah, it's a terrible name. It's an extremely comic booky name. Yeah. I didn't even realize she's not real. She's not from any comic book. They just slotted her into this movie because Tim Burton doesn't like to repeat. And then it wasn't even Tim Burton. But anyways, Dr. Chase Meridian. It does, it sounds, I mean, unless she's gonna be on Paw Patrol. <laughs> I think it fits in pretty yeah. comfortable between Vicky Vale and... All right, yeah. Okay. So Renee Russo got the part. Okay. But she got the part back when Michael Keaton was playing Batman. And when he said no, and they hired Val Kilmer, the studio said, you're too old for Val Kilmer. What? Get out. No. Yeah. That's brutal. Renee Russo. That's brutal. Val Kilmer today could not get Renee Russo today. No. That is for darn sure. And I'm sure even back then, I mean, not that I'm a big Val Kilmer, but Renee Russo could yeah. give me a friggin' break. No kidding. So yeah, she got booted for being too old for Batman. Um, Jim Carrey was so helpful on set, guys, that he actually helped design his own costumes. Which, I mean, I have questions. Like, first of all, who volunteers to wear that much spandex? Yeah. Like, those were terrible costumes. And when you're sharing the screen with, like, rubble, rubber nipples and rubber abs and rubber butt, and you're just like, ugh. Clearly this was the time before green screens. Because, first of all, it is the exact same material. Yeah. Like, it really just looks like all of, like, that, ooh, that unitard, oh, oh. not a fan. Uh, really? <laughs> not a fan we of that. We couldn't tell. Stop it. Um, so let's, okay, let's talk about the nipples. Yeah, that's brutal. The nipples, the butts. And the, sh the gratuitous The enlarged shot. cod pieces. Yeah. yeah. You thought they were gratuitous? Well, yeah. Oh, okay. Because I didn't hear you use that word for any of the other movies. <laughs> gratuitous shots down Catwoman's cat suit. Fair enough. And you did not <laughs> pipe up at all. It's true. But you didn't like it for Batman. Uh, yeah, I guess not. Hmm, why is hmm. that? I think I'm sexist. <laughs> okay. Well, I think Joel Schumacher is gay. I think that's pretty clear. Yes. <laughs> well, it is very clear. Um, he claimed to have slept with between 10 and 20,000 men. Wow. So that's kind of some super gay award for him. Yeah. And he also believed that Batman was gay. So um, Joel Schumacher did not go to school to be in movies. He went, he was first a fashion designer. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah. He broke into Hollywood by making costumes. Okay. So the first um, movie he ever did was called Play It As It Lays, which I know you recognize as the name of a Joan Didion book. 
<laughs> Thanks for giving me that credit. <laughs> Starring well. Anthony Perkins. So that was his first costume design. He also did Bloom in Love with Chris Christopherson. Wow. Oh, yeah. I bet you you would have loved those gratuitous shots. <laughs> um, and then he did some writing, and then he jumped to directing. I think his first directing job was uh, Lily Tomlin in The Incredible Shrinking Woman. It's no, not that good. <laughs> I don't. Okay. But he did do some good stuff. He has some bona fides. He did St. Elmo's Fire and The Lost Boys, Flatliners. Yeah. Some classic 80s movies. Yes. And Batman Forever. And so by the 90s, he had totally yeah. lost it. Okay. Um, in, in the sort of hierarchy of things, where would you put Val Kilmer's Batman? That is a good question. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether he or George Clooney is worse. Okay. But they're both very far down. Okay. Well, Bob Kane thought Val Kilmer was number one. Interesting. Now, to be fair, he did die before he saw Christian Bale. So we're talking about, yeah. you know, the, the early ones. But he still put Val he Kilmer him as number Michael one. Keaton. Yes. Yeah. I disagree with that. I thought you might. Um, Bob Kane's wife has a cameo in this movie as Gossip Gertie. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, that's funny. Yes, <laughs> it is a little funny, isn't it? Um, so, okay, we have Batman. He is newly recast by Val Kilmer, who Bob Kane thought was excellent. Sean Taylor <laughs> did not. Um, would you have preferred Billy Baldwin? Because he was actually Schumacher's first choice. Uh, I give him a shot. <laughs> really? Yeah. Billy Baldwin. Yeah, that's what I. How much I think about Val Kilmer's Batman. I see. So Daniel Day Lewis was in the running. Really? Kurt Russell. I think Kurt Russell would have done a good. Billy's job. brother Alec. Yeah. Ethan Hawke made it to like the top three, I think. That's interesting. Tom Hanks. Weird. Can that's you imagine? Weird. No, I really can't imagine. Johnny that. Depp. Johnny Depp, not a chance. Ray Fiennes was in the top three. I could see Ray Fiennes, I think. Really? Yeah. Not me. He's kind of a Michael Keaton-ish. Oh, I don't think so. I find him too, like... Too prancy? Yeah. Okay. Not even kind of prancy, but like... Refined. That kind of, yes. Like, just in a commercial for, like, silver polish. Yeah. <laughs> and Keanu Reeves actually was a Oh, my God, too. I would have so loved that. So who does not want to live in a world where Keanu Reeves was Batman? That would have been awesome. I would still take it right now. I, absolutely. <laughs> he could still do it. <laughs> so Sandra Bullock tried out for Dr. Chase Meridian. Uh, Cindy Crawford did, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. She was probably too old, also. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Wright, Linda Hamilton. These are pretty big names on this mm -hmm. list. And it went to Nicole Kidman. Um, who, did you like her in this? I mean, she's attractive, but <laughs> I don't really enjoy her role in this movie. Okay. Um, it is a weird role. I really struggled with it. Because we know from her name that she is a doctor. Dr. Chase Meridian. Except every time we see her, like, she would call Batman with his bat signal. Like, she felt entitled to she do did. that. Yeah. Like, this is before texting, guys. But, like, yeah. <laughs> she bat signaled him, and he shows up, and she is in a negligee. And another time, she's just draped in a sheet, which Nicole Kidman was for real naked under that. She was really method acting that day. <laughs> Seemed a little unnecessary. It does. Whew. <laughs> um, especially in a movie that was supposedly been made for kids. toyetic, yes. Yeah. So toyetic means let's make stuff in the movie so we can have a, a big merchandising uh, line yeah. in time for Christmas, right? We have to make characters that kids will want as toys. Right. And I don't really know that Dr. Chase Meridian is that. <laughs> I think um, little boys would have liked <laughs> Well, <that>. okay, maybe. <laughs> I don't know that parents or McDonald's no. would approve. No. Uh, certainly they did not think the penguin made good toys. No. <laughs> 
Um, so this is the first film where Batman kisses someone while wearing his bat suit. Is that controversial? I don't. I mean, so. I have seen other superheroes do it. Yeah, absolutely. But it sort of feels like, you know, it's not professional. <laughs> don't you think? I, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this. I mean, police officers can't even put a picture of themselves on Facebook wearing their uniform, but Batman can just go gallivanting around women's bedrooms. Although I did think that that thick rubber suit was probably a bit, um, constricting. <laughs> I don't feel like, what happens? What happens if Batman's at half mast? Like, <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> it just does seem as generous as the God piece was. I feel like there's really nowhere to grow. I see you're not even going to agree and disagree on that. You're very quiet. I leave it. You're the expert. <laughs> Okay, so I've avoided talking about Two-Face for most of this time because this character I super struggled with. I don't know, I don't think that I'd ever seen this movie before. I really did not know what to expect from it, so I only really know, like, Aaron Eckhart's. Yeah. Um, Tommy Lee Jones, though, like, this character, and I'm not going to just blame him because obviously he didn't really make the decisions for hair and makeup. But... We see him uh, acquire his burns or whatever you want to call them. He's in court and somebody throws boiling acid on him, which I feel like when it's acid, the and boiling, boiling is, is redundant. redundant. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, <laughs> and like he puts a file up to his face. But guys, how on earth do you get such a straight yeah. and down the middle of your face, perfectly straight, line of a hundred percent scars zero percent scars and even a surgeon's scalpel couldn't get that straight a line just a freak accident <laughs> one in a million uh -huh. that's what makes it so befuddling and okay. drives him crazy okay but also that half of his face does not really look scarred so much as it just looks neon magenta <laughs> right right as, uh, that's what boiling acid is a it's a known side that's effect that's the known okay i didn't <laughs> realize that um so rick baker is the uh makeup guy on these and legendary guy he, exactly um he was not allowed to, to do the typical bulgy eyeball and the exposed teeth because of kids right yeah. So he was very disappointed not to get to do that. Well, why would you get Rick Baker if you're not going to make it disgusting? <laughs> it's true. But what I have an even bigger problem with is why did his hair, the half of his <laughs> hair, like that's an acid does not change the <laughs> root of your hair to turn it a weird color. So that must be a choice. He's just riding this thing for all it's worth. I mean, he is because he's also getting his that's clothes right. tailored yeah which makes no sense to me like what is up with this guy but yeah he's getting half his hair dyed like why how did his face scarring oh my gosh well that's I because he goes crazy that is a so now you're saying going crazy your medical diagnosis of crazy does that to his hair it's almost like he has two personalities but it's not a dual but personality what? thing. It's a good and evil thing. He has his good side. He has not, his bad side. I we never see his good side. No, we don't. <laughs> Absolutely not. So I feel like everything you're saying is <laughs> made up. Suspicious. Well, it is. It doesn't work. Clearly. <laughs> clearly. So you have no. You can't give me anything on this. It's just about what? About the scientific. His reason? hair. Why did this half his hair turn a color? I think he's dying it, just okay. like he's choosing his but, suits. Who, but a, okay, fine. I just have to make my peace with this. But you don't terrible. have to make your peace with it. It is terrible. <laughs> oh gosh. So, um, we talked about who they had in for Robin and who they had in for Batman. Uh, a little bit about the Riddler, but did I mention that Steve Martin was approached to play the Riddler? No, you did not. Okay. So I think 
that would have been an interesting yes. thing to see. I it mean, would have. just not in this movie. It would have been a waste because oh, this movie was going to be bad no matter who did it. Yeah. It's a good idea. It's it's an interesting idea, but poor Steve was too sad because he had just gotten divorced and his good friend John Candy had just died. Mm -hmm. And he felt too sad to make movies. Okay. So he, he passed on Fair. that. Which, you know, was the right he does not end. regret, I'm yeah. sure. Um, so I saw it. I don't know if I yelled to you on time. Oh no, I think I did try to make you go back and then I was like, no, it's fine. But uh, an uncredited cameo by John Favreau in this movie. He plays an employee of Wayne Enterprises. Hmm. Which, I mean, he clearly had not planned out his future. <laughs> because, I mean, it's probably rude. It's rude to, to cross like that. But another cameo by In Vogue. Really? That's right. They play like street walkers whenever like Robin's doing his little joyride okay. in the Batmobile. Oh, huh, that's yeah. funny. Yes. I, I guess they're not recognizable <laughs> mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, he's just tooling around town in the penis mobile, winking at ladies. <laughs> As he does. As he does. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, because you know that earring. Yeah, that's it rough. It makes him so hip. <laughs> yeah. So relatable to the 90s youth. Yeah. We were like, he's just like us. Yeah, you know that he's a troublemaker. Mm -hmm. He does not respect authority. <gasps> so there's going to be a bit of a conflict when he gets under the roof <laughs> at Stately Wayne Manor. Okay. Here's my conflict. He's 37. He's a grown man. <laughs> Why did Bruce Wayne have to adopt a man? There's no reason for it. There's like, absolutely... It's I the stupidest thing. I take it like thing. Dick Grayson is meant to have been younger a kid. than... He's, a, he's like 14 or 15. But Chris O'Donnell is not. No. No. And there's no pretending that he is. No, he's not. an adult. He's clearly an adult. I have no idea. Like, that makes no sense. It makes Why? no sense. Of why the police have dropped him off at Batman's house. And like, if he's house. so <laughs> rebellious and stuff, but he's also like, I'm 27, but I still need a dad. Like, <laughs> I just don't get it. What am I supposed to think about this guy? I just can't. No. Ugh. I nope. just can't with it. It makes no sense. I can't with that. I can't with his earring. No. Nope. I super can't with chicks love dig the car oh yeah <laughs> first of all we've already established they're street walkers and they'll say anything if you pay them dick okay <laughs> god so i had actually a bit of a hard time following the plot of the bad guys in this movie yeah so somewhere along the line edward nigma uh, the Riddler. Yes, but before he was the Riddler, he was a, a Wayne Enterprises employee, employee, scientist, scientist, uh, inventor. I don't know. Yeah. How did he get turned into the Riddler? Um, because he got mad at Bruce Wayne and right. slash he had invented something that would beam into your brain. Yes. Only it would also make him smarter because it would suck your brain waves oh, out and give them okay. to him when he was wearing the special helmet. <clears throat> okay. I mean, they, those two got together yep. to do this brainwave thing, which they really should not have let us see the machine because it is so crazy it's, primitive. It's like a blender. It's worse than like an Etch-a-Sketch. Yeah. Like they they look into Bruce Wayne's yeah. um, head and from that deduce his true identity. Even though all you saw was, was a picture a of a bat, which like a child's drawing of a bat. Yeah. Literally nobody's brain has ever looked like, like this made no <laughs> sense. Oh, oh, it really upsets. It makes no sense. It makes no sense, but also it's so dumb yeah. and juvenile, and like it's just. It's okay, for kids. I get, no, <laughs> it's stupid. I, I get that you don't have the technology, so just like don't show don't it. Don't do it. Don't yeah. show it. Oh, it was rough. I just could not. The the primitive aspect of it. I don't know. It's ridiculous. Yes, it is. 
Um, and then, like, somehow Bruce decides to give up being Batman so he can, like, live with his lady. Yeah, for some reason he yeah. does make that decision, mm. but only for like, I mean, a very short amount of time. I mean, it's not worked out with the other two. Yeah. So this time, Dr. Chase Meridian, super serious doctor. Yeah. He's going to give up being Batman. Although that was so short-lived, it almost seems like we shouldn't have bothered to make we it a We shouldn't have point. bothered. Absolutely <laughs> not. It's stupid and it doesn't play any part in the movie. It's just like, oh, will he? Won't he? Of course he's going to. <laughs> yes. Batman forever. Not Batman for the first time he <laughs> yeah. hits. And then Robin alone. <laughs> yeah. So then um, the Riddler or whatever blows up the Batcave. Yeah. But he didn't know about the Batcave under the Batcave. Who did? Which, I mean, it seems like lots of people have had a free pass into the Batcave. Yep. It's not that well kept a secret. Nope. And somehow, like, I also feel like if somebody blew up the top floor of our house, the basement might the basement also be also messed be up, but not in this case. No. Um, no, he fireproofed it. <laughs> Wonderful. He saw this coming. Uh, but he should have, like, stocked it a little better, because the only suit he's got in there is, a, like, a prototype for Correct. a sonar. Yeah. The only one that survived was the exact one that he needed. <laughs> Even though Alfred's like, but it hasn't been tested. <laughs> <laughs> so somehow it's like, ah. Just to add a little bit of drama. Yeah. Like, will he? Won't he? Is oh, he going to quit again? Yeah. So then they have to go to Claw Island to save the girl. Stupid yep. Dr. Chase was yep. probably hanging out in a bustier and yeah. <laughs> got herself kidnapped. Yeah. So uh, luckily, they not only have a bat wing and a bat boat. boat. I mean, I, although that's... It's the bat boat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so they have these two. Lots of things did not get blown up. Luckily, they have these things. The that important they, things stuck If you're around. going to an island, it is good to have the back boat. Yeah. And a plane. Absolutely. So it's really and they've got both, that way. so they can each take one, mm -hmm. and that way only one of them can get destroyed. That's <laughs> right. the theory. Yeah. Which I don't understand when you have clearly two bad guys in this movie. Uh huh. How you're like, if we take two things, they can only shoot one of them. And they only have one gun? Yeah. <laughs> I don't... Argh. But it works out. It works well, out exactly that it way. It works out. Yeah. Okay, I'm so glad. <laughs> so. So. Boy, this movie. Boy, this movie is, is stupid. Mm -hmm. So do you want to see the Schumacher cut? The Burton cut? No, the Schumacher cut. What does that mean? Like, Joel Schumacher could not make the movie that he wanted to Correct. make? Correct. When he died... They found in a 40 minute more cut where the the tone was a little darker. Like there's actually a lot of stuff cut out of this movie, but they <laughs> left in little hints of like, okay. there was this whole like subplot with the red diary from his, and oh, like he right. goes into the cave yeah. and he's confronted by a human sized bat, which Okay, you're telling me this is like a, a more adult, serious thing, but also a human-sized bat. Okay, you in. should know that one of Batman's villains is Man Bat, a man-sized bat. <laughs> no, I'm done. I'm done with this. Ah, why? Why? This. Oh, God. <laughs> I gotta walk that one off. Yeah, you do. It's best not to dive too deep into oh, his villain catalog. Oh, into just catalog. anything ever. No. <laughs> there, like, nothing good about this movie. No, right? there's like, really did anything not. good happen in this movie? Nothing. No, worse. like I don't. It just as bad. Like the villains, I'm like the weird um, Drew Barrymore and Debbie Mazza are playing like yeah. sugar and spice. The good so and the bad. But not good. Like, how are you? A, if you're a hunch henchman for Two Face, yeah. Um, I don't think you're really good. Not really. You just wear lace instead of leather. Like, Correct. yeah. <laughs> and what a '90s Drew Barrymore, eh? Yeah. God, you gotta love that pencil thin line. Yeah. Oh boy. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard to look back up. <laughs> 
And yet, Batman Forever is 90s through and through. It really is. It's such an awkward time capsule. Yeah. That should have stayed buried. Yeah. <laughs> shouldn't have to confront ourselves with that. It's rude. No, it is rude. Um, Joel Schumacher wanted Bono to be in the movie. Oh. And Bono said, no, I think, like, you know, the character that he was being at the time on, on tour, he really wanted to just retire that character when the tour ended. But they did contribute songs to yeah, the soundtrack. They did. They have the credit song. Yeah. Hold me, thrill me, me. Kill me. Mm-hmm. So that was nominated for a Golden Globe, um, but it lost to Pocahontas. Sorry, Batman. Disney. It's not a great song. I mean, that uh, was a pretty no, bad period for you because it also too. was nominated for the Razzie. Yeah. But it lost to the song from Showgirls. So it just wasn't even bad enough to be It wasn't be even, remembered. yeah. It's just gonna die a slow death. Well, it's gone. I forgot about that yeah. song. <laughs> no, for sure. They do not put it on their greatest hits. <laughs> yeah, that whole era is one that you two would like to forget <laughs> in the mid-90s. I think that sort of a lot goes of us with, would yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I like to pretend I was born in 2003, so we could just skip those <laughs> awkward years. <sighs> God. And this is a relic. It really is. Yeah. Best left. I mean, period. I cannot believe this movie. Yeah, it's awful. But wait a minute. There's a fourth worse. one. Yeah. So, <laughs> if you really, thought this yeah. was the lowest of the lows, guys, stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned because we have Batman and Robin coming up next. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. Bye.